What's up, Calc Gang? All right, so we got this statics problem today. So we have this distributed load over this beam, and we want to find the components of the reactions at, beam, at points A and B. So let's get started. So looking at our image, A is a roller and B is a pin. So what do we know about rollers and pins? Well, if you have a roller, a roller only has one force, and that acts perpendicular to the surface. So we know that at A, we're going to have one force that points upward like this at Y. So then at B, we're also going to have B of Y, and because B is a pin, it also has B of X. So we can put B of X here. Now we don't know which way B of X is pointing, but we can just draw it in there and we can figure it out later. So let's go ahead and find this, right? So we have three unknowns, and let's go ahead and see if we can figure out any of them. So the first and easiest unknown is gonna be some of the forces in the X direction. So if we do some of the forces in the X direction, it's gonna be equal to zero because we're at equilibrium. And we're gonna notice that we don't really have any forces acting in the x direction except b of x, so negative b of x. So this just tells us that b of x is equal to zero, right? There's no forces acting in the x direction, so b doesn't have to do any work in the x direction. It doesn't have to apply any force. So b of x is equal to zero. That's a really ugly b, but you know, you get the point. All right, so nice. So the next part, uh, we have two unknowns, and if we do some of the forces in the y direction, we're still gonna have two unknowns, so we're gonna need a different equation to do this, and we're gonna to need to use moments for this. So to use moments, uh, we're gonna to need to know what these distributed loads are and where they act. So we wanna simplify these distributed loads into a new force body diagram. So this 600 distributed load, this one's gonna be pretty easy to find where it acts because it's just flat. We know it acts right at the center here. So this is gonna be 1.5 meters in. We can label that as a force there maybe. And then let's break up this triangle. So we have this, a rectangle and a triangle. So if we break this up, then we have this distributed load, which is 600 kilonewton per meter, and then we have this triangle distributed load. So this first one is gonna act halfway in between, right? This rectangle one, it's pretty simple. It's gonna act halfway in between. But then this next one, we just have this triangle here. So this triangle, a triangle, its center of mass is always a third of the way down from the top. So if we take it and we go a third of the way down from the top, that means we're going one meter over. So this one's gonna act at one meter. So now we know where these three forces act and we need to find the magnitude of them. So let's start with the 600 one. So we can actually do either one of these and we can actually even simplify it into one force. Uh, let's, why don't we do that? Let's simplify it into one. No, let's not, let's do it. Let's keep it simple, right? So let's, we're saying that we have this right rectangle. So right rectangle. So we have a 600 kilonewton, kilonewton per meter distributed load, and it acts for three meters. So this meter and this meter are gonna cancel out, and you're gonna get that it's 1800 kilonewtons. Are we in kilonewtons? We're just in normal newtons. When do I get kilonewtons? Uh, should we just do this in kilonewtons? Because I started doing it in kilonewtons. Should I start over? Screw, we're doing kilonewtons today, okay? I know it's in newtons, I don't know why I'm doing it in kilonewtons, but we're just gonna continue with that, right? So 1800 kilonewtons is the right rectangle. Same with the left rectangle. It's also 600 kilonewtons per meter and it acts for three meters. So we know this is also 1800 kilonewtons. And then now we have the left triangle. Right? So how does this act, right? But well, we need to find the average of it, right? So it starts at 600. Oh, well, actually, so we already accounted for this. So what we are doing now is we're making a force that looks like this. So this is 300 and this is zero. And then it acts for three meters, right? So this is gonna be 300 plus zero divided by two, just the equation of a triangle. And this is kilonewton meters. And then it acts for three meters. Okay, so the meters cancel. And we get 450 kilonewtons. All right, so now with these three forces, we can go ahead and redraw our force product diagram into something a little bit more simple. So I'm just gonna redraw right under here. It's gonna be the same distances, right? This is B, this is A. So we got A of Y here. And we said that this triangle is gonna act a meter over. So it's gonna be one meter, and it's gonna act here with the force that we found, 450 kilonewtons. Right? So then this next one, this rectangle is gonna act 1.5 meters over. So it's gonna be this distance, which is 1.5 meters. Uh, I can draw here, this is gonna be 
1800 kilonewtons, right? So then it's going to be halfway there, which is 3 meters, and then our next force is going to act at 4.5 meters. So this is, I don't know, 0 0.5 meters, 1.5 meters, 1.5 meters. This next one acts here. This is another 1800 kilonewtons. And then we have a B of Y here. So now that we have this, we can finally take our moments. So start with, uh, let's start with A of Y, right? Let's start in taking the moments at A. So some of the moments at A, we know it's equal to zero. So let's start. So moving from A, we're gonna go right. So we have this negative, so we have this 450 kilonewton load, negative 450. And I put a negative because it's gonna make us wanna rotate clockwise, right? If you push here, it makes us wanna rotate clockwise. And clockwise is a negative number. So minus 450 times its distance, which is one meter. So then the next one is 1800, and it's also making us wanna rotate clockwise. So it's minus 1800, and its distance is 1.5 meters. Next one is 1800, also negative, because it makes us wanna rotate or clockwise. This distance is 4.5. And then finally, our last one is B of Y. So B of Y is actually the one making us rotate counterclockwise. So we're adding B of Y, and its distance is six meters. <coughs> So this is our equation, so if we're gonna move B over, so just by subtracting B to the other side, you're gonna get six B of Y, so I'm gonna take B of Y, and we're gonna actually divide it by six really quick. I'm just gonna simplify this equation. This should be pretty easy to solve for you. And then, of course, this is gonna be, you know, whatever this is, so it's gonna be 450 plus 2,700 plus 8,100. <clears throat> and here you get that B of Y is equal to 1,800, 75 newtons. So I'm being really confusing with my units, I know. So we're in newtons, I put kilonewtons. Let's just put kilonewtons here, whatever. You know, we're in kilonewtons today, why not? All right, so we found B of Y, now we just need to find A of Y. So now that we have only one unknown left, we can do some of the forces in the Y. So some of the forces in the Y equal to zero. So it's gonna be equal to A of Y minus this 450, just going left to right, minus 1800 minus 1800 plus B of Y. And we know B of Y is that number, so we'll just plug in, plus 1875, and then move A to the other side, and you get that A of Y is equal to 2,175 kilonewtons. And there you go. So not too tricky of a problem, really. Just gotta make sure you got your force body diagrams right and learn how to calculate these distributed loads. And you should be good. So yeah, thanks for uh, all your support. I'll see you in the next video. Uh, feel free to check out my playlists. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.